哈。Let's start with our prayers. Good evening. Thank you all for Good joining evening. this class, Gita Wisdom Session. We are on seventh chapter, Knowledge of Absolute, Gnana Vignana Yoga, and the acronym of this chapter is Head. And we will see what is Head in the coming slides. Let's start with our prayers. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. So let's start with a quick overview of what we studied in the last class. We did the first 12 verses. And before I get into that, I also want to give a brief overview that we have finished the first six chapters of Gita, which is titled Karma Yoga. And after the six chapters, I uh, was reading recently about how Krishna describes Karma Yoga in a simple uh, way. All the six chapters essence is uh, available for us to understand in this one small example. So Krishna is sitting in Vrindavan and he is telling his uh, friends that he says, we are all sitting under this, this tree, underneath this tree, and this tree is giving me shelter or giving us all shelter. Do you know, this tree is the best example of Karma Yoga. And all his uh, friends say that, why do you say that? Then he says, you just see, the tree is so selfless. The tree works hard. It grows in size. It gives you flowers, it gives you shade, it gives you fruits, and uh, it, it shelters you from rain, sunshine. It doesn't differentiate between men and uh, squirrel, monkey, birds, etc. etc. So this is the uh, selflessness of a tree. It works uh, day and night, produces so much of fruits and flowers, and it is so happy when you take it from it. It doesn't say, oh, I must eat my flower or I must eat my fruit. That is renunciation complete detachment to its efforts. That is what Krishna wants us to do. And he says, when you even throw a stone at a tree to pluck a fruit, the fruit, the tree gives you the fruit and bears the pain in solitude. So that is the uh, example of Karma Yogi. So Krishna wants us all to be like that. We work, we work selflessly. We, whatever we uh, earn, get it as an award for our work, he says, you renounce it to me. So this is the best example of Karma Yoga that I came across. So with that, we quickly jump into what we did in the last class. So we finished the lesson one, which is hearing. What does Krishna say here? He tells Arjuna that uh, this is the starting of Bhakti Yoga. We are in the first chapter, that is 7 to 12 is Bhakti Yoga section. And uh, the first three verses of this chapter talks about the glory of knowledge about Krishna. And Krishna says, Yad Gnasri uh, Tachrunu, you that is, you can get to know the knowledge about me only through hearing. Hearing is the first limb of the nine limbs of devotional service. It starts from Shramanam, Kirtanam, Pada Vishnu, Pada Sevanam, and it goes further. Through hearing, we are able to understand what is Gnana. Gnana is knowledge that tells us how great Krishna is. He is the supreme personality of this uh, world. And then Vignana. Vignana is the realization. How do we apply that knowledge? He says all this is possible through hearing. And he also says that in the third verse that Manishanam Sahasreshu, very, very difficult to find across a person who knows me. Then he uh, gives us the lesson two, verse four to 12, where uh, he's everywhere. He tells us about his energies the uh, material energy that is from which the prakriti comes. And then he talks about spiritual nature, spiritual energy from which we all living beings come. Then Krishna is all pervasive. He tells us he's the source, he's the cause, he's the essence. In fact, he describes 14 elements that we went through in detail in the last class. He says, I'm the taste of water, light of sun, fragrance of earth, strength of the strong, intelligence, sound in ether, ability in man, and the heat in the fire. So all these things help us understand how Krishna is the source, cause, and essence of everything. He maintains this world, and he is beyond three modes. Whenever he comes into this world, he is transcendental. With that, we go to the, uh, the lesson three, verses 13 to 19, where Krishna gives you a choice. He is not compelling anyone to follow him. He says, you accept what I say, or you reject what I say. So this is what we're going to start today. Surrender unto Krishna, but it is our choice. There is no compulsion. And then 
the last uh, section of this chapter is verse 20 to 30 he talks about demigod worship so we have a choice either we surrender to krishna or we surrender to demigods so we will come to know after we go through this class as to what is the advantage of surrendering to krishna and what is the disadvantage if we surrender to demigods so with this brief overview we start with the uh, class so the first verse tribir gunamayer bhavair ebi sarvam idam jagat mohitam nabi janati maam ebhya param avyayam very important words he says the jivas the living entities the atma are all deluded by the modes and hence they cannot understand me what is the translation deluded by the three modes we all know they are goodness passion ignorance the whole world does not know me who am above the modes and inexhaustible there is a lot of confusion in understanding krishna that's what krishna is saying and that confusion comes because of the three modes Let's go through how do we understand this verse. What is Trivir Guna Mayer? Trivir Guna Mayer is there are three modes and this whole world is enchanted by the three modes. And he says Mayer, they are mine. It is my internal energy, which we call inferior energy because this energy does not have consciousness. He says it originates from me as Upper Shakti. We studied that in the last uh, class. And all living entities are uh, completely under the illusion of these three modes and uh, how do we understand what does modes do to us it's like wearing tinted glass that's the uh, closest example to understand what is uh, the effect of three modes ebi sarvam idam jagat he says everything and everyone in this world is bewildered by three modes nabi janati they do not know what they do not know because they are wearing colored glasses so our perception is uh, colored by goodness it's colored by ignorance and it is colored by passion so each mode takes us on one different path and we start believing that is reality mam ebhya param avyayam i have again uh, highlighted mam because krishna is very clearly saying me i mam ebhya param avyayam i am beyond time and space he is not saying i am impersonal I am Brahma Jyoti. He's saying, no, I am as a person telling you, I am transcendental and I am imperishable. That is the meaning of Maam Abhya Paramavyayam. One quick story to tell you all that these three modes not only put uh, jivas, atmas into illusion, even the devatas. Why we, uh, I'm telling you the story is that it links into the demigod section that we're going to study later. So this is a story about Banasura. Banasura was one of the most uh, feared demons. He was uh, in the descendants of Prahlad Maharaj. So he came from a great lineage and he was the eldest son of Bali Maharaj. To such a great parent, we had Banasura as a son. He was the eldest. He was blessed with thousand hands. He was a great devotee of Shiva. He, uh, in fact, when Shiva did the Tandam Drutya, Banasura played the Muzanga with his thousand hands because nobody could compete him uh, compete with him in his mastery or Muzanga. Then what happened? Lord was very happy with them. Lord Shiva said, oh, Banasura, please tell me what do you want? Ask a boon. Banasura says, see, I have come from a family where Vishnu protected all my uh, forefathers, my father. I want you to protect me. I believe in you and I don't believe in Vishnu. And the Lord Shiva is surprised. Uh, he doesn't know why is this man under illusion. But in, uh, he has promised him a boon. So he says, okay, so be it. And then as soon as he gets the boon, typical of an Asura, typical of a demon, he becomes arrogant, egoistic, and he starts his reign of destruction. And uh, to cut the long story short, he has a daughter by name Usha. She falls in love with Krishna's grandson, Aniruddha. And uh, now Banasura knows it is not easy for him to get a marriage proposal going. So what he does, typical of a demon, he abducts Aniruddha and keeps him prisoner. But what happens? Naturally, Krishna is uh, out to protect his uh, grandson. So they attack Banasura's kingdom. They defeat him. Krishna cuts off all his thousand hands, just four hands are left, and he's about to be killed. That time, Shiva comes rushing and says, uh, Krishna, do you, know, do you know that? I have given him a vow. I have given him a boon. And that is, I will protect him. So you cannot kill him. If you have to kill him, first you have to kill me. And uh, Krishna is surprised. How can Shiva be under illusion of the modes? He wants to fight with me. And then he says, so be it. If that's your choice, let's fight. 
and they fight gruesome war and shiva has to accept defeat and then he falls at the feet of krishna and says oh krishna pardon me i am under the illusion of modes or three modes and i should not have done this i am sorry i am only not only sorry i also pray for pardoning my uh, devotee banasura so krishna says okay so be it so this is this story tells us that lord shiva brahma indra there are 33 devi devatas in this world all officers of special duty of krishna they are very important they are key to manage this prithvi manage this material world but they cannot be equal to the lord that's the essence of this and you can see any demon which could be ravana banasura narkasura they used to pray they used to get a boon and then in the end it used to be a form of vishnu who comes and kills them so that is the essence of this verse the power of the three modes let's go to the next verse very important verse daivi uh, hi isha gunamai can, can i ask a question yeah oh yes so can i ask yeah uh, you know in this one trikona and cos all all throughout yoga trikona means you say um uh, tamasa satvika and rajasa right but here is it's called okay. as um, goodness passion and ignorance the it is the equivalent modes. of them ratsik tamasik that's all that's all yeah yeah that's what i mean i mean i wonder whether it is either the change the tune or different version no 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 uh, it is just modes, we are no. using that so wow. passion is ratsik ignorance yeah. is tamasik yeah Yeah. goodness okay. is uh, satvik okay. no change okay. in that okay no change thank you okay. thank you thank you so let's look at summit point 14 very important where she says now we understand what krishna is telling arjuna he says daivi hi isha gunamayi mama maya duratyaya mama eva ye prapadyante mayam etam taranti te what is krishna saying he says you can transcend maya you can transcend the three modes only by surrendering to me mayam etam taranti te mam eva ye prapadyante prapadyante is surrender then you will be free from the modes uh, influence he says this divine energy of mine consisting of the three modes of material nature is difficult to overcome mama maya durtyaya but those who have surrendered unto me can easily cross beyond it so this is the essence of this verse daivi hi means divine indeed <clears throat> so it is his energy hence it is powerful there is nothing uh, strange about it 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 is coming from krishna and he is very openly telling arjuna mama maya duratyaya nobody is able to overcome this it is impossible and i am also telling you that there is only one way that you can do it there is no shortcut and that is you will have to surrender unto me now how do we understand krishna and his energy it is like you have uh, a parent a loving all parents are loving their children and uh, but the children the parents want the children to be disciplined so what do they do they appoint a tutor so the parents give love shower the child with love but the tutor plays the role of a strict disciplinarian same is the role of maya so maya plays the role of a tutor in terms of trying to purify us by putting us under illusion and if we realize that we are under illusion and then we surrender to krishna then she is okay you are qualified to go to the next level so this is the way maya is playing a role as a tutor of from krishna mam eva ye prapadyante but there are some people who surrender unto me then what happens what is surrender surrender is you take shelter of krishna and we know how shelter happens draupadi she prayed to krishna when she was in trouble until and unless she took away her two hands he wants total surrender 99% also will do as long as she was holding on to the, her sari krishna did not come the moment she removed her hands she thought now okay i will be completely disrobed but nothing of that sort happened that is krishna he came and saved her then arjuna now this whole geeta was spoken because arjuna had to fight the war and what did arjuna do he started with confusion but then at the end he says vachanam karishyam tava i will do what you want and he fought ferociously so surrender is one is you give up completely don't have any pretense of surrendering to the lord and you have questions like arjuna ask the questions get your doubts quarrel clarified and then do your best for the satisfaction of krishna that is surrender in fact prabhupada says in uh, shweta shudra upanishad 3.8 
it says tam eva viditva so freedom is possible only by understanding krishna so whatever verse we study here is also uh, substantiated supported by the upanishads let's move to the next verse namam duskritino mudha prapadyante naradamah maya aphartha gnana asuram bhavam ashrita so in this verse now krishna is telling there are four types of people who are duskritinas so krishna has identified and said arjuna these four type of people will not surrender unto me come what may now let's see who are those <coughs> in the translation it is said those miscreants who are grossly foolish mudha who are lowest among mankind naradama whose knowledge is stolen by illusion maya aparth gnana and who partake of the atheistic nature of demons do not surrender unto me asuram bhava ashritava so these are the four types of people who do not surrender to me let's look at the detail line by line meaning namam duskritino muda now duskritino kruti kruti means activity generally kruti means positive meritorious duskruti means it is negative it is impious it is notorious you are working against the scriptures so he says nama duskritino muda so these are the people who have collected lot of sins in their past lives so they act against the spiritual injections namam prapadyante naradamaha so muda is the first what is a muda muda is a foolish person he is like a donkey beast of burden he works hard for a small bundle of grass the, the our donkey doesn't even know that the grass is available freely if he walks across into a field but that is muda that is how he is designed <clears throat> but a donkey is sincere it, it it has spiritual inclination it's not that it doesn't have spiritual inclination but they have no time a donkey is busy working 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 so if we are muda we are also in the category of that where we have time for working but no time for spiritual pursuit second naradamaha nara is human adamaha is the lowest kind so naradamaha means he is amongst the lowest of the mankind now when you say lowest of the mankind it is nothing to do with his status in the society in fact he is well placed it's just that spiritually he is in the lower category that's how we should understand he is socially politically well developed you know you have nothing to choose from him when it comes to the material world so nothing to compare a status about him in the material world it's all to do with his spiritual inclination maya apahart gnana now this is another category of people here they have knowledge but that knowledge is stolen by illusion that is why he says maya apaharta apaharta means stealing so the maya has stolen her uh, the knowledge of these people and they are lost in maya now this could include scientists philosophers scholars now again these people are misled it's not that they have uh, what you can say a firm belief that they have to be against scriptures not that it's just that they have walked around the path or on the path where they don't tend to believe in what the scriptures say and they end up with an interpretation against lord god so it's like you know prabhupada gives an example he says i have sent a person to the prison and uh, if any person is uh, smart he will say how soon i will come out of the prison he will have the best lawyer fight the case get a bail come out but we are if you are a maya apartagnana uh, uh, person what you will do you will sit in the prison and say that i will do a, a phd on the prison structure so that man doesn't want to come out of the prison that's a close equivalent of understanding how maya plays a role on this person <clears throat> asuram bhavam ashrita is very easy to understand they are downright demoniac people they don't want to believe in god they have only one mission that is defy deride and demolish a given a forum they will start shouting that there is no lord don't believe in krishna so these are the four types so people krishna describes who do not believe in krishna muda first type foolish naradama spiritually not inclined maya aparth gnana knowledge is stolen by illusion and asuram bhavam ashrita demoniac they are atheistic people now he gives you four examples of people who believe in him they are devotees of krishna who are they very important verse chaturvida bhajante ma jana sukritino arjuna artho jignasur arthaarthi gnani cha bharatr chaba 
what is the essence of this was there are four types of subkrutinas who are they let's see this oh best of the among the bharatas bharatar sabha four kinds of pious men chaturvidha begin to render devotional service unto me the distressed the desirer of wealth the inquisitive and he who is searching for knowledge of the absolute so let's see who are they so chaturvidha is four kinds of people bhajante maam is those people who worship me he is not saying prapadyante just look at the whole journey of life is if you start with pra- bhajante and reach prapadyante the uh, spiritual learning cycle is complete so we start with worship and end with devotion and surrender so that's the importance of this word his devotees are only in the stage of bhajante they still not come to the stage of prapadyante so we we can understand this word sukriti now because we have or just uh, read about duskritina so sukritina is pious states so these people have pious credits it have they have collected this in their uh, old in their past lives and in this current life they are they are, they are people who follow the scriptures and there are three types of sukruti that the scripture describes bhogon mukhi they are devoted but they are out to enjoy also but they do it as per scriptures that is fine you are a very rich man you can lead a lavish lifestyle but don't try to be breaking the law be on the side of scriptures mokshon mukhi we will see this when uh, we come to the last part of this uh, chapter they are after liberation krishna is very happy you can come to me i will give you liberation also bhakti an mukhi now these are the most uh, advanced kind of devotees because they are only asking the lord for bhakti so let's look at quickly what are the four types of the devotees of the lord who surrender to krishna who accept krishna artho this person is in distress he wants to escape sorrow and he he is uh, you know he he is pious but the life is not dealt a good card so he is in tremendous pain with the current life situation example of an artho is gajendra he was a great devotee of the lord he got cursed and he got uh, he was born as an elephant then he was caught by a crocodile and they you know imagine a powerful elephant elephant could not come out of the grasp of a crocodile and then gajendra suddenly remembered from his past life that is sukritina and he started praying to the lord and vishnu comes and saves him because he is his devotee so that's the power of you may be an artho but you pray to the lord bhajante jignasu inquisitive he is seeking knowledge of the lord and krishna says i welcome ask me any number of questions you want i have all the answers he is keen to go beyond dukkha and sukha he says these are phases of life i understand he wants to know who is the lord how does he really take care of us how does he protect us so this is the second uh, kind of people uh, brahmo uh, atato brahma jigyasu so he is the jigyasu category example is saunaka adarshis they were rushis they were surrendered to the lord but they were always inquisitive they used to ask so many questions to the lord and they used to find the answers third type of person is artharthi he is the opposite of artho he is uh, he is a poor guy and he is only looking for financial benefit give me money o lord that's his prayer it's easy to understand because most of us at some time uh, we would have a prayer to the lord to ask for uh, financial help dhru maharaj is an example his mother did not uh, treat him well he got angry with her and he went and prayed to the lord and within 6 months lord came in front of him and said ask me what you want and at that time he says lord after seeing you i realize i don't want any financial boon i don't want any kingdom i am very happy to be your devotee so this is what happens if you are surrendered to the lord last one is nani most important lord is very happy with people who are intelligent because he says this man i don't have to teach him he is very happy he does not uh, ask me for uh, anything other than knowledge he says i give me gnana and i want vignana he in fact he has gnana he is only seeking the help of the lord to get vignana so how do we understand gnana i told in the last class gnana is the greatness of the lord and vignana is the sweetness of the lord all the leelas that he performs is to tell us how he can look after his devotees gnani cha cha means they are my devotees nishkama bhaktas bharatar sabha oh great one amongst the descendants of bharata gnani cha bharatar sabha means gnani is the best of all four devotees to summarize quickly there are four kinds of devotees who pray to the lord they are 
artho people in distress jignasur who are inquisitive artharthi who is a poor man and jagnani knows bhagwan in fact the next verse talks about the gnani in greater depth tesam gnani nitya yukta ek bhaktir vishishyate priyo hi gnani no athyartam aham sacha mama priya one line uh, explanation of this verse is gnani is the best of the four supritinas so that is the essence of this words krishna loves gnanis translation of these the one who is in full knowledge and who is always engaged in pure devotional service is the best so the lord is telling arjuna which of the devotees are his dearest for i am very dear to him and he is dear to me because lord reciprocates so he says tesam tesam means among the four sukrutinas that we studied in the last verse the gnani nitya yukta who is constantly engaged in my service he is dear to me why he is dear to me because his devotion is not occasional it is perennial it is nitya yukta ek bhaktir vishishyate he is continuously in love with devotion he has lord in his heart he wants nothing and he is fulfilled always only such people can pray to the lord for knowledge and not for any benefit priyo hi gnani no athyartam he says the gnani is very dear to me because he is only aspiring for ek bhaktir single minded devotional service and he says i am dear to him because he is uh, pursuing me with devotion and hence i will compete with him in reciprocating his feelings that is why he says priyo hi gnani no athyartam i will give him back infinite love that is the essence of understanding of spiritual knowledge you pray not for uh, material benefits pray for devotional service and krishna reciprocates in more than uh, it is like he says if you walk one step i will walk 10 steps gnani he has no material desire that's what makes him dear to krishna now how do we understand the difference between a gnani and an artho or artharthi gnani is like a wood which is no wetness which has no wetness whereas all the other three types of sakama devotees artho artharthi jignasi or jignasur are also wood but they are not yet dry they still have some wetness whereas a gnani has no wetness and hence it can catch fire immediately the best kind of fire wood that you can get and krishna in 4.11 he says ye yatamam prapadyante tam tasaiva bhajami aham in whatever way you approach me i will reward you in the similar fashion so it is not that he is saying this for the first time he's already said this in the fourth chapter next now he gives glorification of his of this uh, kind of devotees udhara sarva evaite gnani tu atmaiva me matam astita sahi yukta atma mam eva nuttamam magate one line meaning is intimate relationship between krishna and pure devotees so just by devotion you can become close to the lord and he's saying that again and again in this bhakti yoga section all these devotees are undoubtedly magnanimous souls you just see he says if you pray to me krishna gives them the status of being a magnanimous magnanimous soul but he who is situated in knowledge of me i consider to be just like my own self just imagine the status of this devotee he says he is equal to me in love being engaged in my transcendental service he is sure to attain me he need not have any doubts the highest and the most perfect goal ma mevan uttamam gatam what is the uh, let's go by line by line udhara sarva evaite so krishna says all these four types of devotees that we studied in the last few verses are undoubtedly magnanimous souls they are noble are noble they are udhara i am giving him them I'm giving them this status they are mixed devotees it's not that they are pure devotees but still they are surrendering unto me sarva evaite all the four have equal status in terms of love from the lord gnani has a slight edge because he is pursuing him selflessly so instead of going anywhere else so krishna is again giving a hint about what is coming in the next verses he says they are coming to me nani tu atmaiva me matam astita sahi yukta atma so what is saying they he is situated they are situated in knowledge of me they know that they have to come to me so 
He says, I consider them to be just like my own self. Astita sahi yuktatma. This, this is a great glorification of his devotees. And so what he says, granis are as dear to him as himself. In the uh, Uddhava Gita, we will see that there is another description where he says, if you are a pure devotee, then he says, I give them a status of more than me. He says, they are superior to me because so difficult to find a pure devotee. Sahi Yuktatma doesn't think he's the body. He's not influenced by the modes. So this is how the Knani scores over the other three devotees. Maam Evan Uttamam Gatem. He is sure to attain me. That's the assurance Krishna is giving. He, the highest and the most perfect goal. Established in Bhagwan reaps complete fulfillment. Everything else, you can, uh, you can get whatever material desire to be fulfilled. You can get it fulfilled by praying to any devata. It depends on how uh, severe and serious are you in your pursuit. But if you want liberation, you want to be with the Lord, then it is only through devotional service. And Gnani knows that very well. Now comes the another verse where he says, Bahunam Janmanam Ante, Gnanavan Maam Prapadyate, Vasudeva Sarvamithi, Samhatma Sudarlaba. The most important line of this verse is Vasudeva Sarvamithi. That is realization. That is Viknana. The rarity of a pure devotee. A pure devotee in Sanskrit in scriptures is known as Kevala Bhakta. What is the uh, translation of this? After many births and deaths, he who is actually in knowledge surrenders unto me, knowing me to be the cause of all causes and all that is. Such a great soul is very rare. Let's go line by line. So in 7.16, we read about Bhajante. In 7.19, we are looking at Prapadyate. I told you the journey of spirituality is start with worship and then you end up with surrender. It may take a lifetime. That's, that's not in our hands. I will also share an example where it can happen in a few minutes going forward. So here he's saying, Bahunam Janmanam Ante. Even these four Sukritina devotees can take lifetimes to move from Bhajante to Prapadyate. How does this happen? When you worship, you go through the process of purification. And what could be the various uh, methods you adopt, the various processes you choose, it could be Chitta Shuddhi, it could be, or you could be a good Karma Yogi, you could do Chitta Ekagrata, keep your mind focused, you can do Upasana, you can do devotional service, you can do Vairagya, have a complete, you live in this world, but you live as though you are a water on the uh, leaf, Stitha Prakna, this leaf doesn't get wet. And the uh, water doesn't get, get become green just because it is sitting on the leaf. That's how we should be. That's the essence of uh, how do we move, move from worship, bhajante to uh, prapadyate. Gnanavan. So this knowledge, when you get that, when the person becomes knowledgeable, when we go through Gita, we go through Bhagavatam and we realize that that's what it takes, then you start surrendering unto me. Maam prapadyate. Why do you surrender unto me? Because you have this Viknana with you, and that is Vasudeva Sarvamithi. What is Vasudeva Sarvamithi? The most powerful verse of the Gita in this chapter. He's saying that you realize that I am the essence of everything, all pervading presence. You can see me in Prakruti, you can see me in Jiva, you can see me everywhere. Apara Prakruti, Para Prakruti. And you also have come to that realization that there is nothing more uh, than Vasudeva. He is the absolute. There is no reality beyond Vasudeva. That is Vasudeva Sarvamithi. If you come to this understanding, then you will surrender to me. Now, you may be wondering, oh, well, how is this possible? Uh, then there is a good example which brings this alive. So we go back to the story of Hiran, uh, Hiran uh, Kashipu and uh, Prahlada. So Hiran Kashipu draws his sword and he says, Prahlad, now you have a last chance. If you answer me satisfactorily, I will let you go. If not, I'm going to cut your head off. If you are saying Vasudeva Sarvam Iti, you please tell me where is uh, Vishnu? Where is he? Is he in this pillar? If he is in the pillar, let him come and show himself to me. If not, your head will be severed in the next few seconds. And lo and behold, 
he taps the pillar and narsimha comes out in all fury and kills him that is the belief vasudeva sarvamiti prahlad as a small boy did not have any doubts in his mind that the lord can come and save him even from the pillar he was not afraid he was not fearful of death he was so confident that yes if his father asked me where is lord he says he is there is he in this pillar yes he is in the pillar <coughs> that is the realization of vasudeva sarvatam sarvamiti sar mahatma we can understand by the word mahatma the great soul now he says so durlabha we all know durlabha means very rare extremely rare and uh, so durlabha means it is kind of you know few and far in between you how many prahlad maharaj can we find in our lifetime you go through all the literature he is one and unique so that's the essence of vasudeva sarvamiti prahlad maharaj reached to stage where he was where he is because he had this realization in his heart when his life was at stake he didn't uh, waver he didn't have that one piece of doubt in his mind oh will god come and save me he was so confident and he says even if the lord doesn't come i have surrendered myself and i will sacrifice my life so surrender and sacrifice that are the two pillars for realizing vasudeva sarvamithi let's look at verse 20 now we are getting into demigod worshippers so krishna is slowly moving from surrender to krishna to what happens who are demigods and what happens if you surrender to demigods the next 10 verses we are going to study this and many of us have uh, have strong demigod worship at home so my request is do not misunderstand this please understand the essence of the message of krishna you can uh, pray to anyone it's your choice what happens when you make a particular choice is what is krishna explaining he is never saying don't do this he says it's your choice kamai stai stai rutagnana prapadyante anya devataha tam tam niyamam asthaya prakrutya niyata swaya who does demigod worship now all of us have a strong linkage with demigod worship we love ganesha we love saraswati we love uh, durga mata we do vishnu devi you know subramanya ayappa you name them 33 crore devi and devata what happens when we pray to them so he says those whose intelligence has been stolen by material desires watch this carefully surrender unto demigods and follow the particular rules and regulations of worship according to their own natures so it is nothing to do there is nobody holding our hands nobody forcing us it is just that our desire drives us towards the devatas because each devata is empowered to give a particular boon if you want knowledge pray to ganesha or saraswati if you want wealth pray to lakshmi this is what we have understood this is what we have learned and this is what we follow this is what is the uh, challenge we have now we have to come out from ignorance to awareness kamai stai stai attracted by desires i want knowledge i will pray to ganesha that's the driving motive force and what would be the desire if you are in a family life you want children you want uh, wealth you want to go to heaven you name it you want a promotion i will not uh, end ever more because we know all of us are uh, having enormous endless amount of desires krutagnana why we have desires because our intelligence has been abducted by whom by maya our knowledge is removed diverted deprived we have lost the sense of wisdom prapadyante anya devata so what we have all done we have surrendered to anya devata so he says you are choosing a path you are surrendering to other devatas so what happens when you do that so he says tam tam niyamam asthaya so when you follow a demigod you will have to follow the rules regulations process that are defined by that particular devata you have no choice you cannot say i have read i have studied gita so gita says uh, well i don't have to do any worship to you you just give me what i want then the devata will tell you that no i am not to be sought and learnt about through gita gita gives you the knowledge of the supreme lord if you want to read and understand about me read my scriptures so that that's where the whole uh, challenge lies and what are the niyamas it is prakrutya niyatya swaya niyata means guided compelled 
ಸ್ವಯ ಪ್ರಕೃತಿಯ ವಿ ಡೂ ಇಟ್ ಆಸ್ ಪರ್ ಅವರ್ ಓನ್ ಇಮೆಚ್ಯೂರ್ ನೇಚರ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಫಾಲೋ ಅನ್ರಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ವೇಸ್ ಆಫ್ ವರ್ಷಿಪ್ ಅನ್ರಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ಡೇಟೀಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ವಿ ಗೆಟ್ ಅನ್ರಿಫೈನ್ಡ್ ರಿಸಲ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಸೊ ಹೂ ಇಸ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ವಿ ಆರ್ ರೆಸ್ಪಾನ್ಸಿಬಲ್ ನಾವು ಯು ಮೇ ಬಿ ವಂಡರಿಂಗ್ ಓ ವೆಲ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಸೋ ಇಗ್ನರೆಂಟ್ ಆರ್ ವಿ ಹೃತ ಜ್ಞಾನ let me give you an example to highlight there are so many religious devotion uh, devotional people who say i want to eat meat i am a born non vegetarian so what do i do i say that i am offering this as prasad or bhog to kali mata and once she accepts it i am free to allow i am allowed to eat mamsa now that is their justification now who is there to say that what you are doing is right or wrong you will realize that after bahunam janmana mante if you read uh, gita understand krishna's message then you will start uh discriminating oh should i do this should i not do this next people say i offer a uh, shiva uh, drinks bhang so i am allowed to drink alcohol now these are the immature ways of connecting things to devata uh, demigod worship and then you follow that wrong path and uh, in scriptures it is said i will give you three pieces of advice choice is yours one is concession you want to do it i will allow you to do it remember it is a concession recommendation it is good if you do it it is recommended that you do it the uh, scripture never now says i will punish you if you don't do it has he said that anywhere in the uh, gita so far no and then the third is instruction gita is giving you an instruction you should do it if you are wise you should do it if you are convinced that i have to follow the right path if you follow any path prabhupada says in the verse that there are many uh, people who argue oh there are there is only one god i pray to krishna uh, ganesha i will go to krishna it is not possible krishna is saying very clearly you pay to them you go to them you cannot come to me it's like taking a ticket from bombay to delhi and saying that i want to go from bombay to calcutta is it possible not possible so you pray to lord ganesha you will get the benefits from lord ganesha don't expect lord ganesha will take you to goloka it's not possible so this is what krishna is saying different worship different results and why is this happening because our puranas are vast many lifetimes are not sufficient to go through the puranas and the puranas are also in the three modes there is tamasik purana you will be surprised to know tamasik puranas guide people to worship shiva nothing wrong in it because you chose to choose tamasik purana you also have access to ratsik purana where people are asked to worship brahma did we go to read that no our lifetime it is not sufficient by the time we have understood shiva worship our lifetime is over then there is satvik purana like geeta which says worship vishnu vishnu worship krishna so the uh, the kind of scripture that we choose also takes us to that path so the choice is to be made by us now this is a very eye opening section of gita and all i would request is to pause reflect don't judge don't conclude what is krishna saying to say and he tells you in the further verses which is even more interesting let's go through that yo yo yam yam tanum bhakta shraddhai architam ichchati tasya tasya chalam shraddham tam eva vidhami aham aham i have again highlighted he is a person i give faith and results to them now this is astounding after realizing this if we still continue on that path then it is our duskrutina it is not our uh, sukrutina i am in everyone's heart we know that he is there as parmatma as the super soul parmatma the so lord is saying that as soon as one desires to worship some demigod i make his faith steady so that he can devote himself to that particular deity so krishna is blessing you as per what your request is you want to worship ganesha he will bless you to do uh, ganesha worship let's go to the line by line yo yo yam yam tanum bhakta whatever form of deity demigod worship you want to do you are free to do brahma is the architect of creation indra is the celestial chief lakshmi is the goddess of wealth so you decide what you want to do shraddhai architam ichchati i will give you shraddha i will give you faith and i make it achala so it's unshakable steady faith to devote to that deity so now we will be uh, we should this is the gnana and vignana part if i pray to ganesha the lord krishna is empowering ganesha to give us the boon lord krishna is empowering us to pray to ganesha so in both ways 
Krishna is connected. So what would happen if we change our worship from Devata to Bhagwan? That is the question we should reflect on. Tam meva, that very vidadami aham. I give him, I strengthen, I enable that strong faith. Achala shraddha. So if you see a great devotee of, uh, she could be a Devi Upasaka, it could be Ganesha Upasaka, you should realize that the blessing of the Lord Krishna is also on his head. That's why he's become such a great devotee of that Devata. Is it wrong? Absolutely not. Nowhere has Krishna said, don't do. He says, I will, I am only concerned about your elevation. You are going to do this worship and then you are going to realize to come to me, choice is yours. I am giving you opportunity. You choose whether you want to pray to me or you want to follow the longish path by going to a devata. So Krishna is not a person who is after glorification. He is not saying, oh, if you don't pray to me and if you pray to Lord Ganesha, I am going to punish you. No way. He says, praying to Ganesha and getting the boon from Ganesha, both are because of my mercy. That is what we should understand. We go further and it continues. Sataya shraddhaya yuktas tasya aradhanam ihate lavate cha tata kaman maayva vihitan hitan. Krishna bestows the benefits to demigods, to jivas. The power to give a boon of Shiva, Brahma, Ganesha, Saraswati, Lakshmi is also coming from Krishna. And he's saying this. It's not that we are quoting from some other literature which we don't have access to. Endowed with such a faith, Sataya Shraddhaya Yuktas, he endeavors to worship a particular demigod and obtains his desires. But in actuality, these benefits are bestowed by me alone. My Aiva Vitan Hitan. That's what Krishna is saying. Sataya Shraddhaya Yuktas, you are, you, I will give you the faith, I will give you the deep conviction. You saw with that person. You do whatever uh, worship you want to do. I am not going to come in your way. Tasya Radhanam Ihate. In the last verse, we uh, read about Architam. Here he is saying Aradhanam. It is the same as Architam uh, in the last verse. Worship. You worship, Ihate is perform worship. You want to pray to Ganesha? So be it. Labathe Sachatha Kaman. What will happen? If you pay to them, they will give you whatever results you, uh, you have asked for. Because you should realize that I am the consciousness behind the deities and I am empowering them. It may look as Ganesha is giving you, I am nowhere in the picture, but I am telling you the reality. So Kaman is the word. You have desire and the Devata has fulfilled that desire. And this is the same Kama desire which we have read even in the last verse 7.20. Maya Iva Vihitan. Maya Iva. He says, I myself, I alone. I am giving all the phalams, all the benedictions through the demigods. No demigod is capable of giving benedictions to the devotees. And if they have to give, they, they have to take permission of me. Whatever blessing anyone gives, it is coming from Krishna. He is the source. So devotion to the Lord is spiritual. Devotion to a demigod is material. So if you want to continue to live in the material world, we can continue to pray to the Devata. If you want to make that step change and go to Golok Rundavana, then you have to change the faith from, from Devata to the Bhagwan. Now he's giving you further uh, challenges. What happens if you are in the demigod worship? Antavattu phalam te saam, tad bhavati alpa medha saam, Devan Deva Yajoyanti Mad Bhakti Yanti Mamapi. What is the essence of this? Results of demigod worship are perishable. Anta Vantu Falam Te Sam. Less intelligent aspire for temporary results. Alpa Medha Sam. Men of small intelligence worship the demigods and their fruits are limited and temporary. Those who worship the demigods go to the planets of the demigods. So the message is very clear. Devan, Deva, Yajo, Yanti. So you go to, uh, at best, Ganesha or Brahma can take you to their Luka. Either you go to Brahma Loka or you go to Ganesh Loka. You cannot go to Go Loka. And if you go to any of the Devata Lokas, you have to come back again. But my devotees ultimately reach my supreme planet. Mad Bhakti Yanti Mama Bhi. Let's go line by line. Antavant Tu Falam Te Sam. So the benefit, the benediction of the Devatas are temporary. The demigods are temporary, their abodes are temporary, and their benedictions are also temporary. 
and it is not difficult to understand this krishna is not stating something which we don't know i mentioned this earlier also look at all our uh, scriptures look at ravana look at narakasura what happens to these demons they are great devotees of particular uh, devata it could be shiva uh, it could be brahma but what happens they get the greatest of boons and then krishna has to come in form of some avatara to try and put an end to that so all their benedictions end after the death of that demon ravana had atmalinga given by shiva but then he realized he made he made a mistake so he goes to pray and he goes and prays to vishnu krishna and then <coughs> krishna does a leela and retrieves the situation that's why krishna is saying antavan tu phalam tesam we understand that tad bhavati alpamedasam so the one who is aspiring for this material desire fulfillment is alpamedasa so all of us have now got a status confirmed by the lord he says we have alpamedasa we have less intelligence if we had full intelligence we would have understood what is krishna saying and what we should be following in our lives devan deva yajo yanti so if you play to the brahma you go to brahmaloka and brahmaloka stay is long as per our material time but still you'll have to come back here again but if you do mad bhakta yanti maam api the four devotees we discussed artho artarthi jigna suknani they will all get liberated by purification so what is the essence of uh, this message as krishna says when you pray to me i cleanse you because maya is under my control and i am not under the control of maya why a devata cannot do this because devata is also under the control of the mayas so the uh, the way we should understand is if you pray to the lord you will get more than what you ask for if you pray to any devata you will get what exactly you have asked for that is the uh, essence and the learning is there are differences in different kinds of worship devata worship cannot be equal to bhagwan worship moving further avyaktam vyaktim apannam manyante maam abuddhaya param bhavam ajananto maav avyayam anuttamam unintelligent men <coughs> who do not know me perfectly think that i the supreme personality of god it krishna was impersonal before avyaktam and i have now assumed this personality due to their small knowledge they do not know my higher nature which is imperishable and supreme we, before we go into this we should just understand krishna is describing an impersonalist now who is an impersonalist in short i don't want to get into uh, there is a big debate going on behind no uh, the scene it is like a mayavadi a mayavadi has a se- uh, separate understanding and he says the lord is brahma jyoti he doesn't have a personal form he comes into this world and uh, he he is also under the effect of the modes of nature and then he goes back and where does he goes back he becomes brahma jyoti effulgence so there is nothing like krishna existing forever there is no golok rundavana this is what a impersonalist says now who is right who is wrong that is something which we should leave it to the mahatmas to debate and decide what we can take home as learning is let us only understand what krishna is telling arjuna in simple words and try to follow that in our life avyaktam vyaktim apannam what is saying avyaktam means unmanifest transcendental you can't see krishna till he comes into this world as krishna agreed vyaktim apannam so krishna comes from golok rundavana as krishna as rama and we see him as the lord as bhagwan and why he takes this human form he says for we performing various leelas because i want to give you the message of truth reality i am not there before i am now there and i am telling you that i will continue to be there the missing link is they also believe that krishna was not there but krishna is now come in but then they say that krishna will go back and become effulgence that that's not all the true krishna says i will come and all leelas are being repeated forever nothing stops he has finished the leela in this world there are many millions of universes like what we have in buloka so this leela is repeated uh, being repeated in some other uh, uh, world like buloka so the unintelligent so he is saying that abuddhaya now i am not saying this until unintelligent i am not saying alpamedasa it is krishna's words he says that the unintelligent think formless manyante mama abuddhaya that formless brahman beyond the material world has taken birth vyaktim 
he was avyaktim he has become vyaktim and krishna was born in the house of vasudeva and it is an illusory form so don't go by what is visible to you don't think he is the supreme lord he is nothing but he is just like one of one of us but maybe more powerful and after death he also becomes uh, brahma jyoti so this now is saying please understand why i am calling them abuddhaya this is a wrong understanding because they do not know that my form birth activities and past times are beyond maya mama param bhavam so krishna is not krishna is saying this and what is bhavam he says that my birth my leelas everything <coughs> is param bhavam eternal they cannot be uh, compared and understood to what is there in the material world param bhavam ajananto bhavam means state existence nature intention endeavor self birth action past time that is reality when krishna comes he does all this to convince us that surrender unto me and avyayam mama avyayam is or mam avyayam is i am eternal now this is what is the essence and this is what is the meaning of this word you cannot think avyayam as something else but eternal it is an eternal form of pure absolute truth ajananto is you are unaware just because you are unaware unaware that doesn't change the reality that is the message of krishna even in 4.6 krishna says ajo apisan avyayatma bhutanam ishwara apisan he says i am unborn a prakrutim swam adisthaya sambhavami atmamayaya so it is not that he is saying this for the first time he says i am unborn my transcendental body never deteriorates so he is mama avyayam anuttamam i still appear in every millennium, uh, millennium that is sambhavami atmamayaya in my original transcendental forms so this is what is the lacking of understanding if we understand it then we are uh, uh, on our path to bhajante then becomes a journey to prapadyante now you may be wondering why is krishna saying param bhava majananto how is it possible if someone looks at krishna why can the, how can there be a confusion now this is there just before speaking geeta uh, this is a story krishna says okay i am going to be your ambassador i will negotiate on your behalf pandavas don't fight a war if duryodhana and kauravas agree to a very very small request give me five villages and we will not have the war so krishna tries but what happens you know duryodhana tries to trap krishna and prove that i uh, not only what krishna says is not acceptable i can also have a better uh, one up one up friendship on krishna because krishna is just another person and then krishna laughingly you will be surprised shows the vishwarupa darshana first to duryodhana it is not to arjuna arjuna was the second time how many of us know this story then duryodhana looks at his vishwarupa instead of coming into devotion he comes into delusion he says this is maya krishna you are trying to fool me i will not fall under this uh, maya that is param bhava ajananto even if you see the lord if you are not sukritino if you don't have sukritino pious credits you cannot recognize the lord you will continue to fight with the lord that is the essence of this word next more important he says naham prakash sarvasya yoga maya samamruta mudo ayam nabi janati loko mam ajam avyayam what is the translation of this i am not manifest to everyone so now krishna is giving a clear message don't think that i'll come and appear in front of everyone always like the sun i am not the sun i am the lord i am bhagwan i am covered by my internal potency like the cloud so if you want to see me get out of the cloud therefore the foolish people do not know that i am unborn and infallible he is continuing the same message to krishna reinforcing that i am unborn i am ajam i am avyayam please understand that and don't get into confusion that i am equal to a devata i am not under the control of the maya naham prakash sarvasya that is you should understand this as aham sarvasya naham prakash ha prakash means i reveal myself i manifest myself he says that right is mine i will i will show to whom i want i will not show to whom i don't want prahlad prayed to him he showed him druva prayed to him 
he showed himself and you know what is the benefit that these people got and what did ravana get what did narakasura get we know all that story what did duryodhana get yoga maya samavrta now he is giving another very important learning he says why people find it difficult to understand me because i am covered by yoga maya what is yoga maya maya is illusion but yoga maya has a criteria it is that illusion which increases devotion so we should understand mahamaya is the one which increases illusion yoga maya is the one which decreases illusion and increases devotion mudo ayam na vijanati mudo means the fools who do not know me they come continue arguing that <clears throat> i am not what i am because muda is covered by mahamaya mahamaya will only increase the illusion and decrease the devotion to such people krishna will not reveal himself loko mam ajam avyam because they are foolish they do not know that i am unborn i have no beginning and i am inexhaustible avyam i have no ending i am not born i don't die that is the essence of krishna why bhagwan is supreme because of this qualities let's go to the last section of this chapter where he talks about how you can move from delusion by maya to devotion the journey from bhajante to prapadyante vedaham samatitami vartamanani cha arjuna bhavishyani cha bhutani mam tu vedana kashchana so what is the one line essence of this why is it not working krishna knows the past present and the future so this is another we studied about his 14 elements through which he told us that he is the essence of this creation and now he is giving us the 15th point of knowledge he says i know the past present and future very very powerful way to understand who is krishna vasudeva sarvamithi o arjuna as the supreme personality of godhead i know everything that has happened in the past all that happening in the present and all things are that are yet to come in the future i also know all living entities but me no one knows that is the essence just because the sun covers the uh, the cloud covers the sun it doesn't mean the cloud is a reality as soon as the cloud goes the sun is back to his shining self that is what is the essence of learning here vedaham samatitani samatita means complete atithani means past so he's saying i vedaham me i know the past of everyone vartamani cha arjuna vartamani is present so the present time and place krishna knows that also bhavishyani cha bhutani i know the future of all living beings mam tu veda other than those four sakama devotees along with gnani who is the most dear to him nobody knows me and krishna is saying this openly so it's not that we should feel bad that we don't have this knowledge it is the way we are allowing maya to rule us if you move from mahamaya to yoga maya we will start understanding krishna so all living beings know me it's not that none of us have any element of surprise if i tell you about krishna you know krishna you know he gave a gita discourse everything but do you not understand what, who is krishna do you understand uh, the vignana of krishna the greatest you all know he did a lot of uh, leelas but we don't understand the sweetness of krishna why because you have decided that you are not uh, getting into this mode of surrender mam tu vedana kashchana now why is he saying this is that now arjuna was greatly disturbed how can i fight my own relatives how can i fight my own grandfather arjuna can understand from this verse krishna is saying when i say arjuna fight i am telling you because i know the future and i know the few, uh, present i am i know vartamani and i know bhavishyani and please understand in the future even if you fight and kill your relatives nothing is going to happen to them they are only going to get liberation and come back to me have faith in me because i know the past present and future that's the way we should understand this verse icha dvesha samudhena dvandva mohena bharata another very important concept dvandva mohena and then he says sarvabhutani sammoham sarge yanti parantapha 
he says what is keeping us in illusion is desire and hatred so we have to try and move away from this o sian of bharata o conqueror of the four he is using two words here he is calling him bharata he is also calling him parantapa all living entities are born into delusion bewildered by dualities arisen from desire and hate very easy to understand this verse ichha dvesha samute na as long as you have desire and hate attachment and aversion then you are under the mode of uh, three modes how, how do we understand this desire for which we like envy for which we don't want for example you go to a party and uh, you want to have a particular kind of ice cream and you don't find that ice cream there what happens you are immediately upset uh, well i wanted this ice cream what kind of a party is this i can't get it one this is a disappointment because you didn't get it your desire is unfulfilled next you hate eating bitter gourd curry and unfortunately or fortunately when you go to the party you find it so you have envy for it and because that is present there you don't like it so you are labeling i like this i don't like this because of your desire ichha dvesha and why is this happening because you are under the mode of uh, nature it is keeping you in duality rich poor uh goodness badness so this is how this world is krishna is staying us uh, telling us openly try to step out of dwandva mohena and sarva bhutani sammoham and he says i don't want to say that you know uh, this is something very rare he says sammoha means complete illusion so the whole world is under the illusion very few people mahunam janmanam ante are able to step out of this uh, the illusion and come to me now how do we understand dwandva moha and sammoha two illusions are being used in the same verse by krishna it is it's like you go to a movie so when you go to a movie what happens you start becoming a participant in the movie you are actually you are just there to see the movie watch the movie but when the hero is uh, beating the villain you uh, cheer when the reverse happen villain is beating the hero you are uh, distressed so this is dwandva moha actually is that reality it is not reality it's the movie you have paid money to go there and watch it for 3 hours but you are in dwandva moha even in the movie you cannot stop your emotions from overcoming you or holding you uh, refuge sammoha where does how do we understand sammoha sammoha is the desire to see the movie if you are smart if you can uh, start looking at vignana stop looking at going to a movie because what is movie going to give you it is only going to give you dwandva moha so he says if you are able to step out of dwandva moha for and also understand this whole life is sammoha you will be able to come back to me and sarge yanti means at the time of birth from that day onwards you are under the uh, cover of this maya dvesha and ichha and if you and now since i am telling you this we are understanding this verse and if you are able to implement this that is realization then we start moving from bhajante to prapadyante now how do we understand the samoha and dwandva moha is this see dwandva moha samoha is darkness and in darkness the one thing is certain everything will be uh, uh, looking semi uh, similar do you agree it's not that a pen is going to different uh, going to look, uh, look different from a pencil because there is darkness we can't see that is how sammoha and dwandva moha keeps us rooted in this material world next verse esam tu antagatam papam jananam punya karmanam te dwandva moha nirmukta bhajante maam drudavrataha qualifications to do determine bhakti so now uh, uh, krishna is giving us some hope what do you do to come out of this ichha dvesha persons who have acted piously in pre- previous lives the read this carefully persons who have acted piously in previous lives and in this life and whose sinful actions are completely eradicated are freed from the dualities of delusion so you need to do pious activities and they engage themselves in my service with determination so this is the verse where it tells us that why we should restrict ourselves esam tu antagatam papam those people who do sinful actions they cannot desire to come out of this illusion it is until and unless he says i am not giving you any uh, liberate uh, let us say uh, long rope antagatam you have to end your impious deeds 
end your impious thoughts come out of hatred jealousy lust greed only then you have qualifications to come to me jananam punya karmanam and now this pious credits can come to you from two sources one is we did purchase deeds in the past which we don't know but some people are born as great devotional people why because it comes from their past lives now past we cannot change but current life is in our hands vartamani so what we can do is try and follow two pious deeds to the extent possible tre dwandva moha nirmuk we just saw dwandva moha last hours and now he's saying i will give you freedom from dwandva moha i will free you from this bhajante maam tudavatha why when you engage me in my service with determination tudavratha don't give up you may not get success you may not understand so many things many verses are very complex you don't know what's the difference between demigod worship and lord's worship it is fine we are all ignorant but we should make that effort to start moving from ignorance to awareness now here the essential principle of krishna highlights is try and follow the regulative principles why is krishna uh, saying why people say don't uh, gamble don't uh, have illicit sex etc etc why because if you have these sinful activities you are always going down into tamasic mode you are not even coming to passion mode so you should be aiming to move from tamasic rasic to satvic only then you can engage in my worship with a firm determination bhajante maam drudavrtah now these two verses we learn some new words which will continue in the next chapter jara marana mokshaya maam ashritya yatantiye te brahma tad vidu krutstam adhyatmam karma chakilam now we read about you know there are three devotees sakama devotees we are uh, read arto jignasu arthardi and then gnani now this is the fourth kind of moksha kami bhakta yes you can pray to the lord give me liberation and krishna is not unhappy with you he says i will bless you with that intelligent persons who are endeavoring for liberation from old age jara marana and death take refuge in me in devotional service they are actually brahman because they entirely know everything about transcendental activities only if you have vignana you can get into this moksha kami bhakta status how do we uh, reach here so he's saying jara marana moksha ya so first is we should understand what is this life all about whoever you are wherever you are born whichever country you are whatever life you are uh, blessed with these two things are realities of life old age and death whether you are in us whether you are in europe whether you are in japan or you are in india nobody is away out of this this is the first step of realization then now you know that i want to come out of old age and death what do you do moksha i want to come out of it fine so we saying maam ashritya yatantiye now the formula the path the direction is also defined by krishna he says take shelter of me strive to get into devotional service and we are doing a great job because we are sitting together on a sunday evening listening to what krishna told arjuna so this is the attempt this is what krishna wants the results will come on its own te brahma tad vidu kristam krishna says the moment you get into this path what we are all doing today you are as equal to my brahman feature you are one of my associates aham brahmasmi that is the only people who have the sukruti can come into this level of understanding you know what stopped you we had uh, we don't have a quorum today because all the others got busy in some other material activities but we chose to go through this session that is our sukruti that is our endeavor tad brahma tad vidu krishna we said okay we will worship you lord in this one hour because we have de- uh, dedicated this time to you we will do our justice vidu means to know krishna means everything so krishna says you will come to know everything you will come to know about jiva adhyatma you will know that i am present in you as parmatma you will know, know that body atma naam is not permanent and you know that the jivas will come back again and again until they complete their entire pap karma so this is karma akilam karma cha akilam so if you know this if you know that i want liberation you are already at the stage of brahman and these words adhyatma is described in great detail in the 8th chapter with this we come to the last verse of this uh, chapter 
सा आदिभूत आदि दैव माम सादि यज्ञम चा ये विधु प्रयाण काले अपि चा माम ते विधु युक्त चेतसा दोज हु नो मी एज नाउ यू जस्ट सी दिस दिस आर द थ्री वर्ड्स वी विल गो थ्रू दिस वन बाय वन दोज इन फुल हु दोज इन फुल कॉन्शियसनेस ऑफ मी हु नोज मी द सुप्रीम लॉर्ड to be the governing principle of material manifestation we will see what is this governing principle while reading the uh, detailed explanation i am the governing principle of demigods he saying that also adi daivam and of all methods of sacrifice adi yagna can understand and know me the supreme personality of god at even at the time of death so it's not that you have to spend the whole life understanding it realization comes from within you don't have to search outside it is not how many times you did something it is about what did you do to understand your own self see the parmatma within you so who is uh, there are three words i describe adi bhuta he is saying i am the governing principle of all material manifestation so adi bhuta material manifestation the upper prakriti he it is his inferior energy adi daivam all demigods are with me i control them adi yagnam whatever sacrifice you do whatever yagya you do you want to please any demigod all that sacrifices will come unto me and the essence of knowledge we heard about vasudeva sarvam iti is the same he saying in this verse again prayana kale api cha mam at least at the time of death if you know me as adi bhuta adi daiva and adi yagna they will be well situated te vidur yukta chetasa even then you can come come back to me and this is a nice story to uh, describe this you know that there was a, a devotee kathwang maharaj one of the greatest temperers that we have seen and uh, he used to be so powerful that even the devatas used to come and ask him for help and in one uh, war with the demons so kathwang maharaj went to devloka and started fighting on behalf of the devatas it was a fierce war and thanks to uh, the courage and you know skill of kathwang maharaj the devatas win the war and kathwang, they are so happy with kathwang maharaj help they say oh kathwang maharaj please ask us for any boon that you want and kathwang maharaj is a pure devotee he has understood that the lord is adi bhuta adi daiva adi yagnam he knows vasudeva sarvamiti he says oh dear devatas just give me liberation i am happy and i have lived enough i want to be free from this birth and death life cycle then uh, the devata says sorry kathwang maharaj you know that we have a limitation we can't give you moksha it is not within our purview however whatever you want other than moksha please ask us then kathwang maharaj says okay what is next step to moksha please tell me when will i die that they say oh well i can tell you your future i know that you are going to die in the next 24 minutes just imagine the dramatic situation and katwang maharaj's 24 minutes left in his life and he has come to know that so he rushes back to bhuloka he takes away 12 minutes it's not a small distance to travel between bhuloka and devloka he comes home he sits in uh, yoga he prays to the lord with single minded devotion and you won't believe he is a live example of a person who could achieve krishna who could go to uh, guloka in just 12 minutes of serious worship he had done devotional service he was always doing bhajan te but he surrendered in that 12 minutes saying that i understand vasudeva sarvamiti please take me to you so that is the power of knowing the lord so only those pure devotees who know him as this who believe in that and many a times we read we hear but we have our own doubts if you have doubt then this is not for you if lord says i am adi daiva he is adi daiva you cannot challenge him through your material knowledge so with that we come to the end of this chapter just quick uh, this thing here adi bhuta he is the uh, cause of this material creation universe prakriti adi daiva all demigods exist within the lord it is better to pray to the lord than to pray to the officer on special duty adi yagna any sacrifice that we do whatever we are doing today in the form of learning geeta is also a sacrifice and this is directly going to the lotus feet of krishna with this we finish this chapter quick summary lessons 1 2 3 we heard about hearing the importance glory of knowledge about krishna 
he talks to us about gnana that is the greatness of lord and vignana the sweetness of the lord and very few people in this world have the knowledge about krishna we are understood by this 14 examples that krishna is that he is the essence of everything the prithvi that we see is his apara prakriti his inferior energy and we all bhutanis all living people are spiritual part of the lord krishna is all pervasive source cause essence of everything he maintains his universe and he is beyond the three modes and then today we started or studied accept or reject there are four types of people dushkritanas who do not believe in the lord and there are sukritanas four types who believe in the lord and he surrenders and then krishna spoke at length in the last 10 verses which is the lesson 4 what happens when we pray to demigods so if you want to go back out of this life cycle of birth and death then pray to the a lot not to the devata and he calls two very powerful words he says all demigod worshipers are alpamedasa less intelligence low intelligence impersonalists who say that a lord has no personal form he is only an effulgence of brahma jyoti he says abuddhaya they have no intelligence with this thank you very much if you have any questions please feel free thank you very much i think it was great explained and uh, actually i had a question how how did you study all these things so really is oh <laughs> it's a self study or whether you are going to any university or well, what is what is that wonderful question so is the i uh, spent <laughs> two and a half years with iskon oh. to do oh. my uh, graduation in gita oh great it is called bhakti shastri mm. and i took two and a half years because i could do it only i could attend a class for two and a half years only once a week oh with my job i couldn't spend more time mm mm-hmm. so and I, it was my innate desire that i must uh, study gita in life so you desire okay. the lord fulfills right 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 and right, right, i'm right. so happy to see you Mm. and what are you doing you are a wonderful example of what krishna said in the first verse tad gnashas yad gnashasi tad shrunu start by listening shravanam right and you are all doing a wonderful job in listening i may not be the authority on gita but i can share whatever little knowledge i have and i must thank all of you for your patient listening thank you very much yes thanks thank you very much yeah. thank you and tell you how many questions yeah I'm, i mean <laughs> i i know yeah two comments um like you say you know, suresh asking uh, you do, you don't told up years this much knowledge is commendable uh, i've been also doing as you know two and a half years so i've been going two or three times i've been going to all chapters intermittent with uh, uh, but not that intensely i have learned uh so you are doing very well you know uh, and the passion with which you are studying you know it's commendable uh, that what i would say for suresh i would say you know, it's, it's it's the you know what you pursue with what passion you pursue it and the inner hunger to understand uh, second thing i want to comment is you know these three things uh, if you don't mind me saying is slightly correction is i mean it doesn't really matter what the words are the is a bhava is mad so these things he say you know these uh, adibhuta is not uh, adi adibhuta adiyajna and um, adi what's those things what are those adi deiva because they come in the beginning of the next chapter okay okay, okay. Right? correct what's the third one what's the third one third one adi adibhuta adi yajna adi yajna adi yajna adi Adi. Adi, yeah. okay. Adi. 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 Uh, he next chapter he says arjun ask what are these this right. he says what is this adhyatma adibhu adibhuta and adiyajna he asked okay 
okay continues okay. because that's what i remember from last time so this is yes, adi yes. adi uh, okay. and unlike adi is of course right adi Perfect. adi adi both adi and something okay. yeah okay. right okay. just just a little correction yeah okay. i mean yeah you understood very well you know i mean i it's it was between shiva and them. we say when they say bhagwan of course they english now uh, but shiva also comes in right <laughs> i find it very strange and very odd you know contrasting between two gods which are two great gods <laughs> okay okay and see this is natural because our understanding has been built on this platform that shiva yeah, brahma yeah. vishnu yeah. they are yeah. all the same Correct. and and there is nothing wrong in that now what happens is mm. if we start being open minded and all these things can be clarified if we ask the right question and go and yeah. pick up the right topic to read <coughs> yeah, yeah. and and prabhupada gave us that choice when he created his con mm-hmm. and he says if you want to study about lord take gita if you want to study the uh, greater uh, understanding about this entire universe learn about uh, about that in bhagavatam and in bhagavatam it is such a phenomenal treasure house of knowledge that mm-hmm. it describes even the uh, we are in the third canto where the it's called embryology in today's medical science and we have two gynecs in our uh, bhakti vaibhav group and i asked them mm-hmm. can you doctor please tell me this was written thousands of years back is there any difference between this embryology that krishna or uh, bhagavatam mm-hmm. is described and then what we as scientists and medical doctors are learning they say that it is bang on the only thing that we don't understand is the lord says in the sixth week i i don't remember the exact when the consciousness enters the baby that soul mm. is something which medical science doesn't understand consciousness mm. medical science doesn't understand but all these exist knowledge is there provided we open yeah. the book and we read it yeah. No, no, I, I, I agree, and I told you this. So the one about the call, C A U L, that's the word they use. Huh. I was amazed when I came across because in medicine, sometimes you know the, when the baby comes out of the womb, there are two membranes. Huh. So that membrane is broken, and then the baby comes out, right? Otherwise, okay. it's suffocated. And that okay. in this membrane is called God. You know, this is the amniotic membrane. It's called, okay. but it's called. Right. So if baby is born with, right, by mistake because it doesn't completely detach and it does not. or even okay. that you know which we see it happens in science but bhagavad gita says about it you know that when i first time i heard it is like you said embryology wonderful or, or you know part yes. parturition or obstetrics yes, yes 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 great 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 in fact we have just thank completed you. third canto and we are going to fourth canto and iskon hmm. has said i will not teach him we on sixth canto because that knowledge is too deep and you may not be able to understand it even if you were to teach him so you want iskon has put a ch- end actually there are 12 cantos that you have mm. to do swadhyaya yeah. mm. you read on your own you will not get a teaching a support for that mm. Mm. amazing amazing yeah i mean even bug three times third time i'm doing well i mean i do with you as well and somebody else as well right uh, it's uh, still still don't understand all of it you know that's why we try to keep attend every every talk everything <laughs> thank you <laughs> thank you very much uncle if there are any questions if no questions then we will close the session i think there are no questions ramesha any other questions in your mind nothing uh, as of now thanks a lot thank you thank you then thank you very much have a okay. wonderful okay, evening okay then yes thank yes. you sir thank you thank you very much yeah thank you very much thank you bye bye thank you bye 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 bye